Hey friends, Ash here with GenSense. Hope you're doing well. Come with me today as we check out some of the best sellers on the market right now. We're gonna delve right into those bestseller lists. We're gonna see both which designer and niche fragrances are hot on the market right now that people are picking up, that people are wearing. So you'll be able to see, am I mainly rocking the best sellers, what the average person is rocking, or am I wearing something a little bit different? And there are actually some decent surprises in here, things I didn't expect. So let's jump into it. Let's check out these best sellers lists and see what's selling right now. We're gonna kick it off with the designers. We got 10 of them and there are a mess load of blue fragrances in the top 10 best sellers. The fragrances that you're gonna see here are the top 10 best sellers as of when I'm filming on Macy's website. Why Macy's? Because they mainly sell designers and they're the biggest fragrance destination, at least in the US. Then we're also gonna go through a couple different niche stores and their best sellers. So we're gonna get niche slash indie and designer all in this video. All right, best seller on Macy's as of this video, Dior Sauvage Eau de Parfum. Be surprised that it's not the Eau de Toilette, though the Eau de Toilette and Sauvage Elixir were also toward the top as well. In order to keep the list from just being a repeat over and over of the same fragrance line, I'm just putting the top ranking fragrance from the line in this list. But Sauvage Elixir and Sauvage Eau de Toilette both would have been in here. I would have expected Sauvage Eau de Toilette to outperform this one, but as of right now, apparently not. This is the best selling fragrance on Macy's. Everyone knows about Sauvage. Great performance, great versatility, great compliment factor. This is basically the Aqua de Jo of its day, because when Aqua de Jo first came out, it was everywhere, it was unavoidable, and that's this one. Number two bestseller, Blue de Chanel, Eau de Parfum. Now this one makes sense being the Eau de Parfum because traditionally the Eau de Parfum for Blue de Chanel has outsold the Eau de Toilette. Pretty much the stuff I said with Dior Sauvage, you can put that in with this one as well. Versatility, compliment factor, all that stuff. Blue de Chanel. And I really, really like this one. Not too sweet, not too in your face, really well-rounded, really well-crafted, well-blended, and classy as well. Blue de Chanel Eau de Parfum, good stuff. Number three, Aqua de Jo. The OG, yeah, the original one. Aqua de Jo Eau de Parfum was also up there. And as of right now, Aqua de Jo Eau de Parfum outselling all the other flankers. So this one and the EDP are selling best right now. This was my signature scent for a long time. Love the citrus in there, the aquatic feeling, the freshness, the white florals. Fragrance is amazing, Aqua de Jo OG. Number four, why Eau de Parfum? Like I said, a lot of blue fragrances there. You can keep scrolling and scrolling and you're gonna see just Sauvage, Blue de Chanel, Sauvage, Sauvage, Blue de Chanel, why, why, Blue de Chanel, Sauvage, like it, it never ends. And just recently, Yves Saint Laurent discontinued Why Eau de Toilette, the original, and replaced it with a new version. But Why Eau de Parfum is staying the exact same. And it's obvious why, because it's a bestseller. After that, Versace Eros Eau de Toilette, Versace's Cash Cow. Sweet, a little bit in your face, loud, great performance, big attention grabber. Eros, not a surprise to see up here. I almost chucked my bottle just now. Now this next one may or may not be a surprise to you, but it is 1 million from Paco Rabanne. Just standard old 1 million. Not the new Elixir, not 1 million Parfum, just the original. And that's something you'll actually see a lot believe it or not. Sometimes you'll get something like Y Eau de Parfum that comes out and, and it's just much superior to the original for most people. But a lot of times that first fragrance that kicked off a line that made it popular is going to be the best seller pretty much forever until the entire line is gone. And we've already seen that. Aqua de Jo, Versace Eros, 1 million. The original outselling everything, even the newest flankers. This has been out for a long time. Countless people have bought it, countless people have worn it, and yet they're still going, yeah, the new one, that's kind of interesting. Nah, I'll buy that, I'll buy that old one, yeah. People get locked into what they like, and they just keep buying that, keep wearing that. One million sexy, sweet, spicy, stood the test of time, still selling. This next one, the biggest surprise for me across the whole thing niche indie designer whatever this one is the biggest surprise i didn't think it would be in the top 10 and yet there it was this one polo cologne intense from ralph lauren i had to double and triple and quadruple check that this was not a sponsored listing 
because on Macy's, when you sort by bestsellers or sort by anything, you'll have sponsored listings of fragrances in there. So they'll pop them up there toward the top and it will just say sponsored right underneath it. And so that tells you, oh, okay, this one, the sponsored one is not actually a bestseller, but the brand is putting it up there. You know, they're sponsoring the ad to put it up with all these other fragrances. So I thought, oh, okay, it must be sponsored, right? No, like this is, this is actually a, a bestseller right now. Okay. I mean, the polo name is recognizable. Anybody sees this, the little, the polo dude, and they go, oh, okay, yeah, Ralph Lauren, I know that. I mean, there are countless other brands that have basically aped uh, Ralph Lauren, and they've made their own, you know, polo brand that's kind of a knockoff, like Beverly Hills Polo Club and other brands like that. So you get something that looks kind of like Ralph Lauren, but cheaper. The brand is really well known is what I mean. When you see it, you know what it is. It's got that cachet. And I guess people have gravitated toward it as just being this new, modernized, easier to wear version, kind of, of the original. It's green, it's fresh, pretty easy to wear. I like the fragrance fine enough. It's just not the type of scent that would scream out to me, bestseller at Macy's, but it is. And this next one, interestingly enough, also bestseller, Tom Ford Ombre Leather. I'm gonna show you this one because I don't have Ombre Leather in the signature line. I've got the original and it really just stands out so much against all these other fragrances. You got this Tom Ford Leather scent and then a whole bunch of sweet blue scents. But there it is, shining like a, a Tom Ford beacon of light amongst everything else. Great fragrance, really good stuff. Followed up quickly by another OG scent, Le Mal. The original, not Le Mal Le Parfum, not Ultramal, just the original. Le Mal Le Parfum is selling well. Also, it's just a few spots down below this one, but it didn't crack the top 10, at least not as of right now. And like 1 million, this is a fragrance that doesn't really need an introduction. You see the bottle, you know what it is. I'd imagine the vast overwhelming majority of you out there have smelled this at some point. Vanilla, lavender, a bit powdery, nice compliment puller in its day and still a lot of people rocking this one. And then wrapping up the top 10 for the designers is this Lunarosa Ocean. Prada's blue scent, trying to scratch and claw its way up there with the big boys, the YSL Ys, the Blue de Chanel's, the Dior Sauvages. It is though ranked higher, at least as far as bestsellers go, over Versace Dylan Blue, so that's something. And this has grown on me quite a bit. I think it's a very nice blue scent, like the iris in here. It's clean, it's fresh, a little bit sweet. Very well done, Lunarosa Ocean, right now in the top 10. As long as you do it with my rules of only having one fragrance from each line. Otherwise, it's not in the top 10. You'd have Dior Sauvage Elixir, Dior Sauvage uh, Eau de Toilette. You'd have Blue de Chanel Eau de Toilette. You'd have these other fragrances up above it. So that's it for designers. That's what's selling right now. Let's talk about niche and indie. We're gonna take a look at what's selling for men. So leaning masculine for Twisted Lily and also Lucky Scent. And if you shop at Twisted Lily, use code GENTS10, save yourself 10% off, good for the whole website. So what's selling at Twisted Lily? Well, it's kind of hard to get their bestsellers because when you sort by bestsellers, it's busted. It just shows you what's new. So you have to sort by featured, which will pull up what's selling best. Yeah, it's strange, I know. So if you sort it by leaning masculine, this, as of now, is what you're gonna get. Number one, Citra Boise the Mancera fragrance that people have held up as an Aventus killer, a potential Aventus alternative. It's really not super close to Aventus. I mean, if you spray them on side by side, there's a lot different. It does have that attention grabbing fruity opening though, that a lot of people are drawn to. It's got good performance as well. The cost is there. It's not really high as far as niche fragrances go. So a good bang for your buck. Some people don't like the leather in here. They think it gets too leathery as it dries, but overall, I think it's a solid scent and a great kind of entry into niche fragrances. Then after that, Morning Chess from Wilhelm Perfumery. This also gets compared to Aventus. It's like uh, one of the secrets of niche fragrances. Do you want something that's gonna sell really well to help people gravitate toward your brand or introduce them to your brand? You do? Make something that smells like Aventus. You give it a twist. I love the bottle on these. I know some people probably don't because they're you know, very short like a hockey puck, but I think they look really classy. And I like the magnetic cap, always drawn to those. Does smell lovely though, really nice fragrance. And then you've got a twofer, two Raja Parfum fragrances, Elysium and Creation E or Enigma Parfum Cologne. 
So obviously Elysium over here is gonna be the Raja Parfum Blue Fragrance Du Jour. I like it. I think it's really pleasant, really easy to wear, which you would expect. The Parfum version, I think a little bit better, a little bit richer, a little more depth to it, also more expensive. And this one has always been a bit of a hype beast, Creation E. Really nice, cool weather fragrance, has this effervescent, sparkly sweetness in the opening. Very, very good stuff. Ton of notes in there, like pretty much all Raja Parfum fragrances, they just overload them. And then number five is Red Tobacco from Mancera. So two Rajas, two Manceras. The opening of this fragrance has the potential to be very divisive. Some people are going to despise the way this smells in the opening. The dry down is almost universally loved. People think it smells great, but the opening is aggressive. Big old blast. A whole bunch going on there, and uh, I didn't like it at all initially. Eventually, over many wearings, I liked it, the opening, uh, but at first I didn't at all. Now Lucky Scent. Again, I sorted by Leaning Masculine, best sellers. Number one, Molecule 01, <laughs> yeah. Not for nothing, but if I were gonna buy Molecule 01, probably buy it from a discounter because you can usually find it in that like $60 range. This is ISO Gamma Super. So a lot of people will wear this by itself. It's hard to pick up a lot of times. Some people swear they can't smell it at all. And people that can smell it will get kind of a light cedary scent profile from it. Some people wear this by itself when they just want something super simple. I actually like Molecule 02 for that same reason. If I just want to wear something that's really nondescript, I'll grab that. Other people will combine it with other fragrances and try to get better longevity out of it by having this or they'll layer fragrances with this. And then after that, another bit of a surprise, BDK Parfums Gris Charnel. I did not expect that. It's got cardamom, fig, and sandalwood as some of the notes in the fragrance. And this is one of the scents that did help this brand kind of break out and have more people take notice of them. This one and Rouge Smoking were the two that uh, popped to my mind anyway. After that, a classic LDDM from Tower Perfumes. I love this fragrance. It smells so good. For a lot of people though, it does become almost like a party trick fragrance, like a novelty fragrance, the type of scent where they open it up, spray it into the air and catch a whiff and go, man, that's nice, and put it right back on the shelf or grab a tester strip and give it a spray and have somebody smell it. And then everybody goes, oh yeah, really good. And then you put it back up. I think it is wearable. It's just a lot of people use it another kind of way. It's like the desert wind blowing in through a spice market. It is killer. I love this. After that is Ganymede, which unfortunately I don't own a bottle of yet, but I have a decant, so I know what it smells like. Mineralic, very fresh, and then as it dries down, it does get a little bit more density to it. Some people uh, think that it's a little too simple. Other people think that it's maybe too synthetic. Every time that I've smelled it or worn it, I just get drawn to it. I want to smell it again, smell it again smell it again. It's definitely not something that smells hyper natural or anything like that, but it does have this addictive quality to it. And that one absolutely is on the list for me to pick up in the near future because I like it a lot. And then last but not least, BR540, Baccarat Rouge 540. Obviously this is unisex, but I think that uh, at Lucky Scent, when you sort by men's fragrances, they put in masculine scents and also unisex scents, which is fine. Classic fragrance, everybody knows it. It's got that cotton candy kind of sweetness to it and it has been knocked off a million times. So not a surprise to see that one up there. So that's what's selling right now, guys. Lucky Scent, Twisted Lily Macy's, Designers, Niche, Indie, that's what's selling. It'll be interesting to see how this changes as time goes, but a lot of these fragrances are well established. So it looks like most of these are here to stay for the long term and you know, some of the newer ones will probably drop out and get replaced with other things, but classics are still selling. All right, I'm gonna take off. Thank you for hanging with me. Thanks for your support. Stay safe out there, guys, and I'll see you tomorrow with another fragrance video. See you later.